of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, yeah, Game of Thrones, yeah, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones, fucking Game of Thrones. Welcome to Game of Thrones chat. Uh, episode uh, season five, episode eleven. Do we have a name for this? It's going to be called uh, recap of season five. Great. Uh, I'm Dan. I'm unsullied because I have not read the books of George R. R. Martin. Not any book by him, actually. And I'm Thanos, and uh, I have. Uh, I'm double solid because I've read the books twice and some other books by him as well. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's do this! Okay, let's start with uh, Arya in Braavos. She went there to uh, see Jack and Hagar and uh, maybe become an assassin or something. Well, that's what she's thinking anyway. A faceless man! A faceless man! No one! <laughs> uh, but when she gets there, of course, uh, she's not really welcomed. Instead, she's told to go away. But uh, anyway, she's able to get into the House of Black and White eventually anyway. And she starts training i guess you could call it yeah i see this as the typical uh, montage training thing but it lasts a whole season <laughs> yeah exactly and she uh, lo she gets to watch the dead and uh, play the game called uh, game of faces to but, learn to lie yeah and uh, she's taught uh, how to uh, change face and be well disguise herself so to say so uh, she's uh, taught a great many things and uh, Jack and Agar is trying to make her become no one, really, because he says like you can be anybody can become anybody else, but uh, not many people can become nobody. They lose your own personality. Mm -hmm. Arya Stark must die. Yeah, and that's why he tells her that she has to get rid of all her possessions. So she shows, throws away all her possessions except needle that she hides. Yeah, she is not very good at this. No, she's not. We will see that at we see that at the end of the season where she's given this uh, mission to kill an insurance salesman and instead she ends up killing Marin Trant. Yeah, and who wouldn't kill Marin Trant? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean if this would have been maybe a mistaken identity thing, <laughs> it would have been okay, but she does it because she isn't nobody. His life was not yours to take. She's still Arya. She definitely is Arya. Yeah. I think that's her plan all along, that she intends to just pick up some nice skills and mm -hmm. then proceed to murder everybody on her list. Yeah, that's yeah, that uh, seems pretty obvious and it's also completely understandable. I, I wonder if there is a point where she actually considers becoming no one. I don't, I don't know. It, I mean, when she gets rid of her possessions, it's, it looks like she's trying to become no one, but then she keeps Needle. It's like, well, that's not really following the rules, then, or is it? So you can't really blame her because she has lost so much, mm -hmm. so many family members, and this is the one thing that she got from John. And yeah, yeah of and course she wants to keep it. And she loved her family. Maybe if she hated her family, it would have been easier for her to get to just forget them. But she she loved them, and she wants revenge. So. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. She's just using this to get tools to get revenge, I think. But uh, Jack in her car does not like this. So what does he do to her in the end when she's not following the rules? First he seems to commit suicide and uh, then... He has to mess with her. Yeah, he's trolling her pretty yeah. much at the end. Yeah. And then she loses her sight. Yep. Uh, or something. Yeah, she becomes blind. No, oh, very, very unclear, I think. And yeah. also, w what happened in that last scene? It, <laughs> yeah. A more in, a, in an episode, the last episode, with so many, uh, so many deaths and so many things happening, that scene was the most confusing one, by far. Yes, but there was lots of confusion to be had in that last episode. We'll get back to that. Yeah, so it makes you wonder if, if every faceless man is no one, are they also everyone? Like these identities, Jack and Akar and the Waif, mm -hmm. are they just people who died before? Yeah. That they can assume. Yeah. So they. Yeah. Exactly. So can anybody? Yeah. Can they become anybody? That it certainly looks like that. And where does the uh, assassin skills come from? The uh, Jack and Akar's uncanny ability to kill people that we saw in season two. Mm -hmm. She receives no training in that. She just. She's just told to poison the insurance salesman. Uh -huh. And all her training is about becoming no one and doing her duty. And yeah. 
or doing the chores in the House of Black and White, but she mm. doesn't really receive any training in being an awesome super ninja like <laughs> Jack in a car. Yeah. But uh, she's only in the, uh, it looks like she's only at the beginning of her training. Yeah, that maybe that's level two. Yeah, exactly. First level is just become no one. And if you it, that's all you need, if, really, if you're going to poison somebody. Yeah, and of course she's uh, trained in the lying as well. So mm-hmm. lying is perhaps the most important skill for a good yeah. assassin. Yeah, so you start there and then, and then you start with poison because it's easy once you, you can become no one. And then uh, you learn uh, other weapons later on. Yeah, I'm also confused by the number of faceless men. Of course, there seems to be only two, and one uh, is maybe dead now. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a few servants that carry bodies or something. That mm-hmm. seems to work in the House of Black and White. But We don't know if they're assassins, yeah. There are very few people in the House of Black and White. We can't... I mean, for all we know, Jack and Agar could just be a god. Yeah, that's uh, something I've been thinking about. Is Yakna Kar the Manifest God? Maybe he is. So maybe she can't really learn. But but somehow she learned these things. But maybe he, he gave her those powers. Just a God giving powers to... So are there any faceless men? <laughs> or is it just a faceless God? Yeah, we, we don't know yet. Very interesting. Because uh, I think this could have been really boring if the faceless men were not this interesting but yeah i, I like the plot it was yeah. one of my favorites you're right sometimes when you when you hear, you hear just a little bit of some, about something and then you try to like develop more and it's like oh so now you lost all the mystique now it's boring yeah but here you learn more and it's get more it gets more interesting yeah, super you, cool assassins because it comes even like. stranger yeah <laughs> well i mean we learned several seasons ago about his super good assassin skills when he's killed anybody he wanted to back in, in Iron Hall. A really good plot planting there, though. three seasons before we know what this guy can do, so we treat him with respect when he <laughs> says anything. Yeah. Or three books before, or, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, I guess that's that about Arya. We'll, hopefully we'll see next season if she gets her eyes back or not, sight back or not. Yes. Or maybe she'll just be skipped. I have some predictions, but I'll save them for my season six predictions. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's move on to uh, Dorn. Uh, oh, do we have to go there? <laughs> well, can't we just forget it? You sound like Jamie now. Yes, you have to go there. <laughs> you sound the, like... the city of Dorn. <laughs> the city of Dorn. Oh, it's not the city of Dorn. Dorn is the country or the, the region. And the Sun Spear is, is the city and the Water Gardens is the summer place. Yeah, I, I really hated that, that they showed it as Dorn on the map. Mm. They have given us a thousand names to remember and then suddenly they think that we can't handle the name Sun Spear. So we cut that from the, yeah. from the show. This, this whole plot line is... And I think, they didn't even mention Sun Spear in earlier seasons. I don't remember. When they sent Marcella away. I... They probably talked more about Dawn than the Sun Spear. Yeah, probably. Uh, if I mean, if they somebody had... tell us, did they mention Sun Spear in earlier seasons? Because I think this was a decision for this season. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, as you may remember, what happens is that uh, Cersei receives a package from Dawn, and from this package, she infers that uh, Marcella, her daughter, the Princess Marcella, is in danger. Yeah, it's Marcella's necklace mm-hmm. that, that... Uh, Cersei gave her. Yeah, and the viper thing, snake thing uh, that they sent with it. Yeah, so House Motel has murdered Marcella, or Marcella is in danger at least. Yeah, some kind of danger. So Jamie and Bron then goes down there on this ill-conceived adventure. Bron even says so, like, why are we doing this? This is so stupid. <laughs> Bros on a quest. <laughs> yeah. I got the feeling that the show has had so much success with like two people traveling becoming interesting, like Arya and the Hound and Brienne mm. and Pod. Yeah. So they were like, oh, road trip. Yeah. <laughs> Bron and Jamie are two of the most popular characters. Let's put them together. Exactly. Yay. So uh, so they go down to to uh, they go down to Dorne, and they meet, they face an uh, appropriate number of soldiers that they can kill. And, that <laughs> and you get the impression Dorn is like a house and the water gardens. Yeah. <laughs> and there are like 20 people in Dorn. Yeah, and there's nobody guarding the water gardens because that's just where the king or the, the prince lives. And God, this plot is so bad. And they're able to get in and 
the sands then you have the sand snakes uh, the daughter the three daughters there of the viper that they are scheming together with his uh, paramour Elara and uh, somehow they decided that they're gonna kill Marcella but then they get close to her and they decide to not kill her, just abduct her, or...? Yeah, uh, it's very unclear and it randomly happens at exactly the same time as... <laughs> Jamie and Bron ends up there, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, how, how serendipitous. Oh my god. Yeah, and, and then afterwards it's like... Do, so Prince Doran has a talk with Jamie and Jamie expresses the concerns they have. So instead of just fighting it out, they're just like, okay, well, let's talk about it. Yeah, so, so basically, Jamie could just have written a letter yeah. and uh, sent a raven, and then this would have all been sorted out. I think they even say that, like, why don't why not send a letter instead? Yeah, I, I think they, the producers of the show got obsessed with showing off this beautiful Spanish castle. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, like, the, the best thing in Dorne. And I, yeah, I think also that it's all because of... Uh, the, the Viper being so popular last season, Pedro Pascal doing such a good job. Yes. And like, oh, we want to see more of Dorn. And well, I mean, there is stuff, there is a plot line in, in Dorn in the books as well, but it's very different. Yeah, so I heard. Yeah, and you and in, in the books, Jamie and Bron do completely different things, but apparently those things aren't interesting, so they had to do this instead. Yeah, it's, it's two King's Guards that go to Dorn, right? Or two knights of some kind. Uh, nobody really goes to Dorne. <laughs> okay. Well, one king's knight, one king's guard goes with Marcella. So okay. Aris Oakhart goes with Marcella back in season two or something. So he stays there. So he stays there, yeah. Okay. So there's nobody going there specifically to do this. So <laughs> this is kind of dreamt up. So you know, you know the two producers, David and DB Wise and Benioff. Uh, Imagine if they had to do a fantasy series and they didn't have the Game of Thrones books to rely on, then the series would be like the, the Dorn plot, kind of. You mean that next season will be like this? <laughs> well, he, they still have the outlines for, from, from George R. R. Martin. Okay, that's, so they that's have, a comfort. Yeah, so let's hope that it's more like the other stuff and not so much like Dorn. I, uh, I think uh, compared to this Dorn plot, Craster's Keep plot from season four seems like Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree. So then they decide that uh, Marcella is going to go back with the Tristan back to King's Landing, and Tristan is going to get a seat on the on the small council, I think. Yes. And then, on a supporting gift, the Sand Snakes decide to poison Marcella. Yeah, I did um, uh, rewatch the whole series with a friend uh, this summer, mm -hmm. and uh, I got him started and I checked in with him along the way, but yeah. I didn't see every episode. But I finished uh, watching the last three episodes of this season mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and as soon as uh, Ilaria kissed Marcella, yeah. he screamed, "Poison!" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, "Maybe." <laughs> <laughs> now we know how I feel. And uh, yeah, this seems so stupid. Uh, yeah. What's uh, it's obvious that that was the poisoning moment, mm -hmm. and that Delaria is uh, guilty, yeah. and they are like a hundred meters from the uh, harbor, yeah. so they just have to turn back and exactly. And then the the sand snakes and Delaria will all, they will all die or something. Yeah, and what uh, one thing I thought about is uh, maybe Prince Doran was in on it for some reason. But that just seems very complicated. Yeah. And he, he, he was the most interesting character in Dawn, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, he but actually had a brain. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, I, I hope we see very little of Dawn in <laughs> next season. <laughs> it's sad. I mean, I did, did like Doran and uh, like Alexander Siddig also, who plays Dor Prince Doran. So it, I, in that way, I would like to see more of Dawn, but I don't want to see more of the Sand Snakes, because I felt it was just silly. Yeah, this whole plotline felt so subpar compared yeah. to everything else. Uh, so let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to uh, King's Landing. The, King's Landing. Yeah, it might be the one of the biggest. Well, it's so many big things this season. So, well, if we have uh, Queen Cersei, is probably the the main character in this. Although we have uh, Queen Maggie and Tommen and Loras and the High Sparrow and everything. I imagine when we uh, remember when we ended season four and. Uh, we asked who is who now has the power in King's Landing, mm -hmm. and uh, the the sparrows didn't appear as an no, alternative because we not. haven't heard of them, and now they seem to have all the power. Yeah, well, we knew Tommen was king, but we didn't know who was gonna really rule. 
from the figure. Maybe Tommen would be strong enough to rule, but he showed in this season that he's not strong enough. He's, no, okay. he's still a kid. I actually missed Joffrey this season. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet Cersei did as well. <laughs> so strong and crazy is better than weak and uh, normal or pious. Or, or, yeah, or just a pushover. Yeah. Well, Tommen, I mean, he, Tommen is a pushover. But he's uh, he's still young, so he could become. Uh, I think he could become a reasonable king. Yeah, and it seems obvious that he is much younger in the books, and he's behaving like he's much younger in the series as well. Oh, that's right. So, so it's, 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 it's really a smash. Yeah, it, uh, you feel like he's nine years old in this season. <laughs> yeah, well, that's about what it's supposed to be. That's what it is in the books. Yes, basically. So yeah, but as he is really older, he appears like a giant wimp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Cersei, I mean, after uh, the demise of her father, Tywin, she wants to become the, the power of, of in King's Landing. Uh, but of course, there's many other people who wants to become the power. Queen Maggie, of course, she, Queen Marguerite, she wants to uh, influence Tommen. And I think she, in a way, she kind of strikes the first blow when uh, she, t she tells Tommen that, oh, your, your mother, she should really go to Castle Rock and retire, so to say. Yeah. And uh, Queen Cersei hears of this and is like, okay, bitch, <laughs> yeah, so come at me. At the start of the season, you think that this will be the King's Landing plot. It will be Cersei versus Marjorie. Mm -hmm. And then that just uh, is overshadowed by the sparrows. Yeah. Well, Queen Cersei, I mean, yeah, Queen Cersei really opens up Pandora's box there. And she's like, okay, so maybe I can use this new uh, High Sparrow to my best advantage. You know, the, the old, sep the old uh, High Septon... Uh, he was corrupt, but apparently he was too weak to really rule the masses. Yeah. So, so she wants somebody strong to do that, and she figures that she could uh, manipulate the High Sparrow. And at first she's able to manipulate the High Sparrow to do the things she, that she wants, because uh, he arrests, he has uh, Loras and Maggie arrested on, uh, on sodomy and perjury, I think it is. Yeah. So at, at first it works out fine, but then uh, the Queen of Forms throws her hat in the ring. Oh, she gets in there and, and also starts scheming with the High Sparrow. Well, first she tries to bribe him, but it seems that he's, uh, he's not really in for the bribe. He's in for power, but... He seems to be the real thing. He seems to be genuinely pious yeah. and not a plotting schemer like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But then the Queen of Forms plays, her, plays him as well. So then, the Queen, so then uh, she, Cersei, is arrested as well. Yeah, Littlefinger has a little finger in it. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't like the way she's treating him either. So uh, I mean, she she starts off with a with a small council with uh, her uncle Kevin and Grandmaster Pycelle and Mace uh, and uh, what is Kyburn also. Yeah. And Kevin is like, well, I'm, I should be in command. He says or something like that. He think he thinks he should be the hand anyway. Yes. And she thinks that she he's too ambitious, so he sh he sends she sends him away. And she really should have made him the hand, and yeah. not having him around is a real mm -hmm. disadvantage for her. Oh, absolutely, but she's power hungry. So she sends him away for that reason, she sends Mace to Bravos on the Fool's Errand to maybe negotiate the, the loan with Iron Bank. And she's really in on this High Sparrow plan, and in the end she, he is her only ally and he turns on her. Yeah, because he's not really an ally. He's Except just... Quyburn, who is always loyal apparently. <laughs> Well, so far. Yeah, because it serves his purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of a necromancer, so... Uh... Yeah, but if it takes him one season to <laughs> necromance one guy, <laughs> he, he can't take over the world. Well, he's, a, he's still experimenting. He's, yeah, maybe he can mass-produce that and produce uh, his own army of undead <laughs> to yeah, fight the White Wolf. Well, maybe he can, re maybe he can like, animate many small guys or one enormous dude. <laughs> So uh, this all ends in a season, I mean, it ends with the scene, the walk of shame. Yeah, much memorable. Yeah, well, she has to, Cersei has to walk naked from, from the church all the way back to the castle. Uh, with a woman walking behind her crying, shame, shame. Bling, bling, bling. <laughs> shame. shame. Uh, uh, a great scene, uh, yeah. uh, but it seems uh, insane of the High Sparrow. It seems like he actually believes that she, he, she is repenting. Mm -hmm. And uh, she ends in a pretty broken state, but she is in her power base and she gets this yeah. uh, monster and 
Mm. Yeah, it's... Uh, she must still have some control of the Lannister soldiers mm-hmm. and the King's Guard. So yeah, I don't. Know. I would not want to be the High Sparrow. So either she uh, takes a gruesome revenge, mm. or she uh, has actually repented. That would be sweet. <laughs> I don't believe in the repentant. No. Repenting thing. But it turned out to be Cersei season. Yes. Yes. You're right about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to uh, let's move on to Essos. Essos. In Pentos, we see Tyrion uh, getting out of the box. Yeah. Not just thinking outside of the box, but actually getting out of this box that had to travel in from uh, King's Landing to Pentos to get away. Pretty miserable. Yeah, he decides to drink himself to death. But Varys t- says, no, we, we have something that you can do. You can go to Marine and counsel, uh, counsel uh, Queen uh, Daenerys, Daenerys. Yeah. So he uh, grudgingly decides to do both, I think. Uh, Council Daenerys while drinking himself to death. Yeah, exactly. No, drinking her to death. <laughs> no, so they, so they go first. They go to Volantis. I think they go. Yeah, they go by by carriage to Volantis to maybe get a ship from Volantis to to uh, to Marine then probably. Yeah, I was wondering about that if they were planning on going in that carriage all the way. That seems ultra dangerous. Yeah, no, I think they were planning to go by ship. Yeah. But then uh, Tyrion is abducted by Ser Jorah Mormont in, in a brothel there. Uh, so uh, Jorah take he grabs a fishing boat and they sail off. So now we have another two two guys on the road. On the road yeah, trip. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that was interesting. Yeah. yeah, that was a very good couple. Mo- yes. more fun than Jamie and Bronn. Although Jamie and Bronn was fine too, but yeah, they they run into more interesting plots. Yeah, and cock merchants. <laughs> they didn't actually run into cockroaches. No, they're just it. people looking for cockroaches. Let's hope for Tyrion's sake that they did not run into a cockroaches. Yeah, we, we would have known. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but I think it was a great couple. And like, Tyrion talks and talks and talks, and uh, Jorah's like just sitting there sullenly, and then once in a while he punches him to <laughs> make him to shut up for a while. <laughs> yeah. And then they get to. Um, they, they end up in Valeria. They take a shortcut through Valeria and get attacked by... Mm, the Stone Man. The Stone Man. And uh, Sir Yora picks up Grayscale. Yes. Some kind of leprosy. Also much talked about in this season. Mm-hmm. And then they, they, uh, they get abducted by pirates. And then they're sold into slavery. And then they end up in Marine. In the training camps for the gladiators. Yeah, and there were, that's where Sir Yora is able to make himself known to to Daenerys again, who doesn't really know how she's supposed to feel about him because she said that she said that he would like last season. She said that she would kill him if if he didn't go away. But he never goes away. <laughs> no, Khaleesi. <laughs> he always comes back. Well, I mean, he loves her and uh, he sees her as uh, his goal in life. I mean, to serve her in any way he can. Uh, I think that he, he'd rather die. Prob- he'd probably just rather die than go away anyway. So. Yeah, and as the meeting for of uh, Tyrion and Daenerys has not happened in the books, as I understand. Mm-hmm. It was much awaited and people were very excited about this. Yeah. And I think uh, there were some great conversations there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and by the time he reaches her, she has lost her most important advisor, I think. So, Sir Barristan. Yeah. yeah. Although I think Sir Yora was even more important, but she lost him even before. Yeah, she definitely needs more advisors, and who would be better than uh, Varys and Tyrion? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Though her relationship with Varys is complicated, it seems, but we'll talk more about that when we talk about Daenerys. Yeah, and Varys is. Uh, I mean, his his uh, his agenda is very complicated. Yes. Very, uh, very hard to tell exactly what he's doing. I mean, he says it. Uh, he he tells Tyrion that oh, I'm doing it for the good of the realm, but he always tells people like, don't trust me. Like, and I mean, you can't be sure that. Is he behind the sons of the harpy? Hmm? It's not impossible. I mean, you have you have the two masters of the Game of Thrones here: is uh, Littlefinger and Varys, and Littlefinger comes off as just being star craving mad when he's not. I mean, he's playing the game well. But it's also completely evil. And they have Varys, who also plays the game well, and he comes off as being really good. Uh, but he's still playing the game. Yeah, but he's still playing the game. But 
if, if there's something we have learned from Game of Thrones is that nobody's truly evil and nobody's truly good. That we have definitely learned. Yeah, so, but maybe Littlefinger and Virus are the, uh, are the exemptions to this rule. Uh, uh. <laughs> can you really play Game of Thrones if you're totally good or totally evil? No, I think Varys will uh, do things that uh, can appear evil. Mm-hmm. And that little finger will do things that can appear good. Yeah, I think you're right. Especially since I just suggested so, as much. <laughs> do we uh, move over to the Daenerys plotline now? Yeah, let's now do that. Now that they merge. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Then. The, the Daenerys plotline then starts with... Uh, I mean, I think the very first thing is they t- tore down the harpy on the top of that pyramid. And that's a symbolic gesture to show that the harpy is no longer ruling Marie now. The dragons are ruling, or the, the mother of dragons. Yeah. And then we see the, that, uh, that unsullied soldier who goes to a prostitute and is killed yeah. for it. Or, well, he's killed anyway by a son of the harpy. Yeah, they, we get our taste of the sons of the harpy rebellion. Mm-hmm. So that's really... I mean, there's two things for... Two, uh, Daenerys really has maybe maybe three problems then this season. One, the Sons of the Harpy, she doesn't know really how to deal with them. Two, the dragons, she doesn't really know how to deal with them. And three, she she lacks a good counselor, good counsel. Maybe that's why she can't really deal with one and two because she needs more counsel. And Barry, Barristan uh, dies in the season in five episode four, I think. Yes. Uh, and. And those were the leaked episodes. <laughs> yeah. I watched them uh, the first Let's week. Let's not talk then, about that. <laughs> then I had to wait a month. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, oh, oh well, he died, but you had to wait a month. <laughs> 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 but but Barristan, I mean, he was a pretty good counselor, but still uh, advisor. But he was more of a soldier than a politician, I think. So she didn't really have anybody good at politics. Sejora, okay politician. At least he has been a a leader of a house yeah but uh, he wasn't really a politician either so it's hard not to feel that the Daenerys just uh, wasted another season not getting anywhere <laughs> at least yeah. she finally left Marine <laughs> at the end there yeah but, but she'll probably come back yeah so she's listening to other people like uh, Daryl Naharis he has some ideas and uh, she even listens to his star in the end and uh, he wants her to fight open the fighting pits to a to appease the people, or appease the lords at least. Yeah, follow their traditions. Mm-hmm. So she does that. Well, before that, she exe- remember she, she exedu- executed her advisor, Mossador. Yes. And he was an advisor that apparently wanted to kill everybody. He killed uh, a prisoner they had against yeah. her orders. So she, he, she killed him as, at least as well. So. And then, everybody, then the people started hurt, hating her as well. Before that, the nobles hated her. Yeah, she has so many political problems in this season. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think the execution was just, but as a politician, you, you can't just think about what's just, you have to think about what the people like also, otherwise you'll have a rebellion. Yeah, that's the, the Barristan Selmy quote, right? Sometimes you have to fight injustice with mercy. Yeah. Uh, I will fight injustice with justice. Mm-hmm. And that's not very popular at all times. Well, she's just very young. I want to address the question of the Sons of the Harpy because we actually do not learn anything about them. We know that they are opposed to her rule. Mm -hmm. They want Marine to return to what it was. But uh, So the first inclination is that they are masters Mm -hmm. or in the employ of masters. But uh, in the end, they are murdering masters as well. So are they slaves or are they just various agents? Was it just collateral damage or... Yeah, it's possible that they're... But they're really targeting the masters in uh, in the arena later. Oh, uh, yeah. But maybe it was a ruse that... <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, but, no, but, of yeah. course, the obvious suspicion was that uh, her husband-to-be was their leader, but mm. he obviously wasn't as he was one of their victims. But it's possible that they just killed those, specifically, specifically those nobles, because maybe they were... Like, uh, like collaborators, uh, collaborator, or maybe they were in on the plot, and they're like, "This guy knows too much. We have to silence him. Let's silence him oh, this okay. way." You know, like any, any, any terrorist organizations will have some people who are against the others, and you there, see. there is a lot of possibilities there. And yeah, I, I like to see more of the sounds of the harpy. Mm-hmm. Well, I still, I mean, I still think that it comes from nobles, but I don't think all nobles support the sounds of the harpy. And I don't think that all the common people are against the Sons of the Harp either. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's probably true. Yeah. Uh, okay, should we go back to the point where uh, Tyrion is accepted? Mm-hmm. And what happens then? Exactly then. Well, she, she ha- they have a long talk about this. Yeah, and Tyrion makes a good job of advising her. Yeah. And he so. gets some drinking restrictions. <laughs> yes. That's true. Uh, what, what are you thinking about anything particular about No, uh, maybe then we should move on to the arena yeah, events. The big fighting pit thing they were Yora is somehow able to survive fighting all those other pit fighters. Yes. And then the sons of the harpy arrive and start killing everybody. And uh, the second sons are nowhere to be seen. Yes. Uh, not in the arena. And the Unsullied, uh, being the best soldiers in the world, can't fight as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it feels kind of silly. And they, they, she didn't bring enough of them anyway. This season really made the Unsullied look like uh, stormtroopers from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's really, really depressing. Yes. Uh, especially in the open arena where they could have yeah. used their tactics. I, I could see them being murdered in brothels and mm. being killed in alleyways and stuff, but in the arena they should really yeah. be able to use their fighting skills. But they are defeated by guys with knives. Mm-hmm. That should be... Po- <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, it, like you say, one guy being stabbed from behind. Sure, anybody can be that, even an elite soldier. But even in, like in, in episode 4, when they were fighting in that alleyway, they did have the chance to lock shields and fight together and yeah they didn't that's how they train and they're fighting with spears and shields against short swords and daggers and yep. they, they should just crush them but they don't and they also seem to be too few we never seen especially in the arena mm-hmm. it's like there are eight thousand of them but, but they're like there's 30 more. in yeah. the arena yeah absolutely and in the in the alley scene they sure they were outnumbered but uh, being like eight or ten against thirty that's okay if you have superior skills and superior weapons. Like uh, a, and still you have shields and spears against guys with knives, so that yeah. should help. <laughs> exactly. It's uh, so they. I mean, like eight, seven or eight of those guys that die right away, and then you have Grey Worm who's fighting like a madman and just kills people left and right. It's like, well, that's not. I mean, okay, so he's the, probably the best of the Unsullied, but still, he's he's not really supposed to fight that like that anyway. Uh, it's, it's weird. Yeah. And then Barristan comes in and kills a bunch of people. And I, I read somewhere that some people were disappointed that he didn't kill more people because he was like the best best swordsman in the uh, best swordsman in Westeros and so on. But I mean, he's an old man and did kill a bunch of people. He did pretty good. Yeah. And it, I mean, this is not like a, a computer game or something. No. It's not uh, like completely unrealistic. I mean, he's, he killed a realistic amount of people. Yeah, I liked his final battle. Yeah, absolutely. He did show his skills. Yeah, and then uh, Drogon. Then Drogon. The teenage dragon. <laughs> he shows up and saves the day. Yeah, and I, I love that part. Uh, the flying and also that Drogon uh, isn't fully grown and he can be hurt with by spears. And mm-hmm. he's actually hurt in the fight. Yeah. But I, I felt very confused by... What happened after he flew away? They were still they were still in a pretty bad spot. The people left behind, like you yeah. and Darren well, Harris, and they. Next time we see them, they just got out of there and yeah. seem to be in control of the city again. He, yeah, I mean, he did kill a bunch of people, and let's. I guess we have to assume then that the rest of the of the sons of the harpy broke after those people were scorched, but they didn't break when he landed. Maybe it was uh, like uh, Julius Caesar's murder that they, their target was Daenerys and nobody else. But uh, oh. of course they murdered a lot of other people. So mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that wasn't the case. Yeah, I, I would have liked to see the, uh, the Sons of the Harpy run away when they saw the dragon. Instead of just standing there and trying to fight it. Yeah, they were fought the dragon really bravely and then they ran away from uh, uh, Yora and Dario. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can take a dragon, but yeah. we can't take these these two guys. They seem really dangerous. Yeah, but although we did attack them first before the dragon arrived, so they didn't seem that dangerous. Yeah, maybe they had to go to they got their food at a specific time and had to leave. Yeah, <laughs> their mom called them to dinner. Let's assume that they broke when, the, except for a few die archers stayed behind and covered the retreat, and the rest people, rest of the rest of the uh, sons 
uh, run away. I, I feel that this is uh, typical of this season, and this is why I think it was the worst season in Game of Thrones so far. But there are so many questions that I feel were just addressed in earlier seasons. You never wondered about motivations and these these mm. strange, stupid things that people do in this season. Yeah, and uh, these kind of questions we didn't have them before. Not, yeah. not to this extent, at least. Yeah. So I, I feel that was a big problem with the season. And that's because they follow the books more closely earlier than yes. they do now. But still we got to see a Targaryen flying a dragon. And yeah. that's, that's worth a lot. Mm -hmm. And then she uh, lands with her dragon. <laughs> yeah. Mom, I just want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then she starts walking around. And then she's found by a great Kalasar, Dothraki Kalasar. Yes, is it her Kalasar? Her Kalasar. Is it was the Kaldrogos Kalasar, uh, or is it another Kalasar? Do we recognize any of the Dothraki? I mean, no, I don't think that we recognized. I don't think we're supposed to recognize any of the Dothraki. I think that they must recognize her because do they treat anybody they find in the wilderness this way? Oh no, there's a lone wanderer. We have to ride around in a circle for an hour. I hate this. <laughs> Maybe there's not that many lone wanderers in, in, the, in the... No, scene. probably not. But uh, if they run into like those pirates yeah. or something, we <laughs> do the same thing. But she she throws off her ring. Yes. Before. So that ring is... Uh, I don't remember. What was that ring supposed to be? Was it supposed to show that she was from Marine or...? Uh, the ring was a gift to her from her husband-to-be. Oh, okay. And I think it was an engagement ring. That that was how I interpreted it. I've been thinking about this a lot, actually. Oh, okay. and, uh, so I think she threw off the ring, just not to be tracked by it. But mm. of course, that's going to happen when yeah. Dorian Horis goes Aragorn. And so, <laughs> oh, they went into Fangorn Forest <laughs> in Nexus. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think she, she wants to uh, leverage her marriage with Khal Drogo somehow. And... Mm -hmm like retain her Khaleesi status and a new marriage would obliterate that. Yeah. So uh, I think that was why she threw the ring. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens. If what happens in the TV series, if it happens the way it happens in the books or something else. Wasn't this the final scene with uh, Daenerys in the books? Uh, yes and no. It's Yes and no. <laughs> now it, I'm intrigued. Well, it, it, it was the... Fire, it was the... Almost the last scene, but it was different. Okay, so there is there is some more information in the books. Yes. Okay, let's uh, not go further <laughs> down that path. But not much. Okay. Very little. But there is some stuff. So, I mean, the, the books are supposed to be done now. It's supposed to be just go into uncharted territory, so to say. But there is a little bit of information left in okay. the books. That may or may not turn up later. So I don't know if it's going to be or not. I mean... I, I do know that there are some some stuff in the books that has not been shown on TV yet, but that has to be on TV. Okay. Uh, but then there's some stuff that I know that has been in the books that I don't know if they're just going to cut out or if it's going to be next season. Okay. And then there's some plot lines that are just way ahead of the books. And we know now that there will be more than seven seasons of the series. So uh, Daenerys can uh, Take time. wander around <laughs> yeah. for some more seasons. Yeah. But one day she might get to Westeros. Or George R. Martin might have been trolling us all this time and mm. uh, Daenerys dies in season 7. <laughs> the whole plot dies. Yeah. That would be appalling. Well, I want to know either way. Yes. <laughs> Please don't die before you finish. And the last thing is uh, Tyrion and uh, Varys then in the Essos plot. Or is there anything else? Da well, uh, Dario and Jora rides out. Yeah, two people two going people. on a journey. Yeah, why two people? Okay. Yeah, and I think that can be interesting too. It's supposed to be two people going on a journey. Yeah, that, oh, that, that's why they couldn't send more people along. I love Dario's speech there when he explained why uh, Tyrion couldn't come, why Grey Worm had to stay. It's, that, that was a because good it seems speech. so convenient. No, it was uh, very logical. It was oh. like the best decision making in the whole season. <laughs> Maybe he should stay around because he's actually good at making decisions. Uh, true. Just, just send some random uh, mercenaries with Yorah. Yeah, and his, his job as the commander of the Second Sons is mm -hmm. like we have never seen any other commander. So there has to be one. 
Yeah, the second sons are mysteriously absent in this whole season. There should be a second of the second of the sons. Second. Yeah, there should be at least a second son. <laughs> yeah. A second second son. First yeah. of the second son. Two thousand mercenaries. Yeah, and uh, no and leader. Were were they in the brothel in the start? No, they were not. All two thousand of them. No, some of them. We didn't see any. We did see a single second son in this whole season, did we? We saw Dario. Yeah, that was the one. But yeah, and he's like, I'm back. Uh, and like he has 2,000 guys in his pocket that he takes yeah. out when it's convenient. <laughs> Very convenient. Okay, let's leave Essos. Yeah, let's move to uh, the Sansa and Littlefinger plotline there. Oh. Uh, it's... Uh, very interesting for me as a book reader to see this plotline. Yes, it's, because uh, it's not Sansa. It's exactly. It's a, it happens <laughs> kind of like that, but to different people. Yes. But in the TV series, that's what we're talking about here, Sansa and Littlefinger, first they uh, leave off uh, Sweet Robin, uh, Lord Arryn, the young lord, at, uh, at Lord Royce's. Yeah, he goes to training camp just like Arya, but uh, it's less interesting, so we don't get to see any of it. I love that scene when he's fighting with the sword, and she's like, ah, ah, ah. And He will come back in season six as a seasoned fighter and commander, <laughs> I promise you. And he will kill Lord Royce <laughs> with one strike. Yeah, he will still be a, a, a weakling. Yeah. So Sansa and Littlefinger, they uh, go north. Yeah. For a marriage, but uh, before they do that, they run into Brienne and Pod. And uh, Brienne is uh, really, he, he, she's really disillusioned. Uh, she's like, she, I mean, she was so close to to uh, finding. Oh, she actually found Arya, and then she lost her. Yes. And now she doesn't know what to do. And then she's like, wait a minute, here's Sansa. So she tries to convince her to go with her instead of Littlefinger, but that doesn't work. Littlefinger wins the debate. <laughs> yes. Shocker. <laughs> so then they have a fight there and then uh, they move on. Uh, Brienne and Podrick follows behind Littlefinger and Sansa. And they go up to uh, Winterfell. Yeah, Winterfell restored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're rebuilding it. They burned it before but not rebuilding it. Yeah, a pretty good job at rebuilding it, Boltons. Yeah, well done. Boltons did well all this season. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and Ramsay he gets a new bride then, yes. Sansa, and uh, they have a lovely wedding night, or well... Uh, they had a beautiful wedding at least. <laughs> yeah, the wedding was beautiful. Uh, wedding night, uh, depends on who you ask, I guess. Yeah, we're not going to go into that scene again, but yeah. uh, there are still some people who do not watch Game of Thrones anymore because but of that episode. <laughs> yes, so I mean, but I don't get it because... It's not like rape is a new thing in Game of Thrones. I think the very first episode, uh, Khal Drogo raped uh, Daenerys. Yeah. Uh, as I said, let's not go there. But uh, yeah, one of the podcasts I used to listen to uh, quit the whole podcast <coughs> in that season and it's now gone. Wow. But we didn't. We are still here. Yeah. So, uh, so Sansa then tries to reach out to Theon. She tries to make him help her. But he's, uh, he sees himself as a dog more than a human being. He lives in a kennel. So when she reaches out to him, he just immediately tells Ramsay about her schemes. Yes. Uh, at least at first. But then at the end, very end of the season, he actually becomes Theon instead of Reek. Yes. Um, obviously pushed to the limit. Yeah. Or something. And then he and Sansa takes a leap. Of faith. <laughs> yeah down into a snowdrift. Let's hope there's a big fat snowdrift at, at the bottom of the, at the foot of the wall. Otherwise they will break the necks. I liked some part of this plot but it felt very dragged out and the whole light, uh, the candle in the window thing was <laughs> <laughs> was stupid. Brienne, you had one job! <laughs> Brienne, one job! <laughs> one job! And you... uh, she stood there staring at uh, I've heard that the uh, we saw so little of Brienne because she was shooting Star Wars. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so that might have been the reason, but uh, yeah. We saw a fair amount of Brienne anyway. Yeah, uh, just at the start, but then she was like, they could have shot all her scenes, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So um, yeah, so let's leave them. Okay. Miranda died. She fell harder, I think. Yeah, she fell much harder on the stone floor there. Okay, let's uh, do the. Um 
the wall. Let's go up to the wall. Maybe we have to talk a little more about Littlefinger because I really yeah. expected the payoff that he was. He got the permission to take the army of the whale mm. north. Yeah. And uh, then we didn't see him again. <laughs> No, so it, I fully expected him to storm in in the last episode, but he didn't. So yeah, he went he went north and then he went back to King's Landing. Yeah, and he traveled so fast <laughs> all over <laughs> Westeros. It's like he, if he had a helicopter, it would have made sense. Yeah, Mace and Meryn Tran took forever just to get across the narrow sea, but yeah. in that time, Littlefinger <laughs> went ten times the distance. Yeah, it was very silly. Granted, he could have gone to support it by ship, but along, but most of the way. Or at least a long way he had to go by carriage and takes forever. His position seems very strong though. He has the will secured, he still owns Iron Hall and now he's allowed to conquer the north. Mm -hmm. He has successfully uh, registered the Boltons as traitors, which yeah. they aren't. And then he has the confidence of the Boltons as well. Yeah, I wonder if he was planning to do this all along. Mm -hmm. Marry Sansa into the Boltons and then take Winterfell with the, it seems kind of unnecessary to seems, what what good did Sansa do for his plot yeah maybe he, he brought her there to show her that hey I'm not so bad look at these guys or, maybe it seems very risky if, yeah because you had the impression that Sansa was the one thing that mattered to him except power mm -hmm. but in the end only power mattered yeah and uh, the fact that he didn't know and I think this was confirmed by the producer. He didn't know that Ramsay was crazy. But mm -hmm. uh, he's one of the most well-informed people in Westeros. Yeah. So um, Ramsay is not hiding his craziness. Mm -hmm. So people should know that he was crazy. Yeah, so this is not very clever. Is well, it? actually, the Starks didn't know either. Like, Rob didn't know. Well, the one explanation is here that he's a bastard and he's just recently been taken up into the Bolton family. Yeah, so he was being crazy in... Uh, in the Dreadfort and nobody know about Well, he was being crazy at the mill outside yeah. of the Dreadfort. <laughs> because he was nobody. Yes. He didn't... At least well, he seemed to have some position of power in the Dreadfort because he was uh, given command of the attack on Winterfell. Well, Roose Bolton lost his son and it's like, well, do I have a bastard maybe? Or? Well, that's true. Was Ross Bolton's son killed in the fighting? In the books, it was uh, the bastard who killed the son, actually. Oh! <laughs> and then he becomes the uh, inheritor, so it's... Uh, okay, it's, yeah, and I think that Ross Bolton is in great danger. <laughs> yeah, not to speak of his wife, then. Yes. Young Walla, who's he may be carrying another son. Uh-oh. So, uh, yeah, this whole... But this is just... It's not... Fought, this whole plotline, yeah, it's not fought through completely. And uh, that's a sign that it's not really a book material, it's more like... Uh, exactly. More like TV material. Okay, let's move on from poor Sansa. Poor Sansa, yeah, okay. So at the wall we have uh, we have Sam and we have Jon and we have Stannis, those three plotlines there. If, we <coughs> if you start with, uh, with Sam, he... Uh, hey, wait a minute, this is even worse than uh, Mace and Mary Trant. <laughs> Because Stannis takes a whole season to get to Winterfell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Well, he had to walk at least. It takes yeah, a lot yeah, longer yeah. to walk than to sail. But and he is like and he couldn't teleport like Littlefinger. <laughs> yeah, and he complains about bad weather and so on. If Maester Ella would have complained like, oh, I, we had bad weather, it took forever to get across the narrow sea. Yeah. If he was said that, I'd be like, okay, plausible. I think he said something like that, didn't he? No, uh, he said nothing of the sort. I think he said that there were some rough seas or something. I, I just rewatched that. I think. So I think he gave like one comment that the the, the journey was a little slow, or maybe. I'm okay, here. I think not. Maybe I'm just dreaming. Okay, comment comment on this. <laughs> did he or did he not say that he had a tricky voyage? Right before it burst into song, there in the <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, Sam and Jilly. Jilly is really content on not, I mean, really intent on being, not being sent away again. Like she was sent away to Mole Town. Yeah. So she really wants to hang out with Sam and she seduces Sam and then, uh, and then. And she's obviously in danger in, uh, in Castle Black. Yeah, exactly. And then totally unrelated, Master Eamon dies. Poor Master Eamon. So now they have no master, no master at all. So that's why. In the end, uh, John decides to send Sam to Old Town to study to become a maester. 
Yeah, and it was a good thing that he was sent away. <laughs> yeah, I think, but that that also feels like John is. Uh, I mean, John wants to. John feels that Sam is a good friend, and he wants to protect him. So that's why he's sending him to Old Town because he, yes. that. So it's not only to make him amazing, it's kind of an excuse. And we are talking uh, maybe too much about the books, but uh, I got the feeling that uh, Sam left much earlier in the books. Mm, yeah, well, yeah, he, like instead of the, in la- instead of late seasons, he left early season. Yeah. 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 So in in the books, he has been yeah in the books you see the travels and stuff. So yeah. Yes, you're right. The but he was season. around for the election at least. Yes, he was around for the election, and uh, that's uh, and uh, just like. Both in the books and the TV series, he was instrumental to the to John's victory there. Yes, and uh, John becomes the Lord Commander. Mm-hmm. Very good. But before that, Stannis wants him to uh, become uh, the new Master of Winterfell. John Stark. He, he says, "Well, come with me and bring the wildlings, and uh, I'll put the wild, set the wildlings free, and uh, you can be the new Lord of Winterfell." But uh, Jon Snow, of course, is sworn to, the black, sworn to the black, so he won't do that, even though it's very tempting, of course. Yeah, he should have done that. He should have done that, and I think Mans should have bent his knee also to Stannis. Yes. Because it's a very good deal, and you should... I mean, okay, so the principle is you don't bend your knee, but come on, you're getting all, pretty much all you want, except that you have to live under the rule of a king. Yeah. And so just accept it, but he says no, so he burns instead. And then the wildlings don't really know what to do. And Stannis has to leave without them then. It would have been a surprise for Brandon when he came back that John was the Lord of Winterfell. <laughs> Why is that my job? <laughs> yeah. So Stannis then after and the Stannis tries to convince John to come with him, but it doesn't work. Melisandre also tries to seduce him and tries to uh, make him come with, but it doesn't work either. So then they leave. Yeah, and John is obviously convinced by <coughs> Sam's argument that he has not broken the oath yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's really faithful to the oath. Yeah, he's like, yeah, because I mean, Corn Halfhand ordered him to to uh, go with the wildlings and do everything to go under trust. Yes. So, uh, so whether or not he has broken the oath for him, it's like he feel that he feels that he has followed it. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Until his death, yeah. he must remain loyal. So Stannis eventually leaves and runs into some bad weather and then she, he decides well kind of bad weather today what do you do when you have bad weather sacrifice your kid <laughs> to the lord of light because he has so many kids to spare doesn't he yes he has one Burner. Uh, it's uh, kind of silly there before that he sends he sends uh, Davos away back to the wall to make another plea come on help us Yes. It uh, seems futile, but if the, the reason to send Davos away was so that he wouldn't stop the sacrifice of Shireen... That was uh, obviously the reason. That makes sense, so that was probably the reason. And... Uh, I don't know... I, I, and the, the burning really made Stannis the most hated character, and that's... Uh, yeah. That's an accomplishment in a series with characters like Joffrey and <laughs> Ramsay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they li- I liked also how they set it up. Before that, they saw, you saw conversations with him and her, and, and I mean, Stannis and his daughter, and like, oh, when you got grayscale, I sent, I did everything I could to save you, and I love you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that was a double planting there. They taught us everything about grayscale, yeah. or at least as much as we know, and uh, they set up this sacrifice. Yeah, that Stannis actually cares. And, and, and like, I don't know, I mean, Queen Celise, his wife, she seemed at first, she's like, oh yeah, let's do that. And then she realized what they were actually doing. Yes. <laughs> like, but you're actually burning her. Hey, stop it. <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 I liked that part, <laughs> her reaction and mm-hmm. her suicide. And how extremely dark everything turned for Stannis. Yeah. And then his wife kills herself. Okay, so his wife is dead, his daughter is dead. Then half his army leaves, and I can understand then that, that instead of retreating, he just makes a stand and decides, well, I'm gonna just. Oh, the Melisandre leaves as well. Yes. So everybody leaves her. He leaves him, and then. And at that point, he is already dead, pretty much. So he has. Yeah, he has no. I mean, he has no heir. He has no. 
What he the? does an extroverted suicide. Yeah, <laughs> very <laughs> extroverted. But all the poor Baratheon bannermen <laughs> yeah. to their death. Well, at least Brienne got the revenge there in the end, so she got to kill him. If he died. I I think he died. Many deaths are uncertain in the uh, final episode, but we already talked about that. Maybe the uh, Sansa Theon thing is the most obvious one, that they didn't die, and Stannis is perhaps the most... Uh, the one death in question where it seems very likely that he died. Yeah. And then, of course, we had people that actually were shown to die, like Mary and Trant. And yeah, Stan, I um, think we can Miranda. assume that Stannis is... I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I'm 97% sure. <laughs> I'm more sure than that. But okay. Yeah, you, of course, you, can, you can't you can be 100% sure, but maybe you can be 100.0%. I think it's more likely that Marcella is not dead than that Stannis is yeah. not dead. Yeah, I'm just going to assume that he's dead. Perhaps everybody died. <laughs> maybe it's all a dream. Maybe. Sounds like dead when the <laughs> next season starts. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Stan is like, oh no, I ducked the swing from <laughs> Brianna. Okay, so then uh, that was that, but we have one more guy at the wall, and that's John. And that's probably the biggest. John thing. Snow. It, yeah, it's the biggest thing for the whole season. And it's, he starts out, start starts by uh, becoming Lord Commander there. Yes. He wins the election, and not everybody's happy with that. Janus Slint, for example, he's giving orders to go somewhere and do something. He's like, no, I won't. I will suddenly grow up here and uh, insult you as well, so you have to do something about it. And boy, he does something about it. Yes, off with his head. Just like dad. <laughs> Just like dad, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Stannis gives like the, the smallest nod of approval I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. There is a nod of approval. Stannis is pleased. He likes the... Yeah, that's his style. Yes, absolutely. Uh, of course, uh, he would have burnt... <laughs> he would have no that's Melisandre's style I think okay I think Stannis style is more yeah I'm gonna kill him myself yeah so uh, he does that and then he decides to go north it, it borrows Stannis' fleet yes to go north to Hardhome and save the wildlings that are shacked up there yeah and then we have this fantastic friendship with the wildling commander the, the highest ranked wildling he captured um, you mean uh, Thorin? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> amazing friendship. Yeah, <laughs> I think Thorin. Yeah, he, uh, he kind of uh, still uh, hates him somehow, but but I don't know. The for I mean, the, what did I say? Foreman. I meant Foreman Giant Spain. Ah, uh, Foreman Giant Spain. I said Foreman. I was like, what? Uh, what Wait a minute. <laughs> That's yeah. another story. Uh, Foreman Giant Spain. Yeah, he exactly. Uh, you think it's a great friendship? Well, yeah, I, I liked it. Which makes the end of the John plot even stupider. <laughs> yeah, but before that we have the Hard Home. Was that the episode 8? Episode 8, Hard Home. Rated highest on IMDb among all Game of Thrones episodes of all seasons. We have the yeah. worst episode in Unbowed and Bent and Broken. And the best episode in Hard Home. Unbowed and Bent and Broken. And that is season 5, episode 6, I think. Yes. Wow, so we have both the best and the worst. They have worst. both the best and worst. There is a tide for the worst yeah. episode, but it is the worst episode. Wow. Well, Hard Home was really good there. And I I, like, I, I mean, I liked the, I kind of liked the fact that they brought all this dragon glass along. And they lost it. <laughs> and they lost it. It's, uh, it's it kind of cool that way. And, yeah. And, uh, but I really liked the fight with the... Yeah, the whole fight with all the, the others, the zombies, whatever. And especially the fight with the White Walker there. And you yeah. got, got to see that Valerian Steel actually works. And my, my biggest uh, thing in this scene was uh, Wun Wun, for sure. The giant fighting the, yeah. the undead. That's, yeah, that's, that that's was epic. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's all overshadowed But what happens to uh, John after his back. Uh, yes, uh, and I have to comment again about how stupid the uh, travel back to Castle Black is that they leave the fleet and they yeah. walk outside of the wall mm -hmm. instead of taking the fleet around the wall. <laughs> because somebody decided that they wanted a shot of Sir Alistair Thorne standing there looking angry at the top of the wall. And it's double stupid then because if Alistair Thorne was convinced that he would murder John, 
Yeah. Why did he open the door? Well, it's hard to murder him if he's on the other side. Yeah, but uh, it's obviously yeah. death to be on the other side. Maybe he just yeah. wanted to save the like seven remaining brothers mm-hmm. on the other side of the wall. But uh, letting all those wildlings in yeah. who owe their life to Jon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now <laughs> they have 50 guys in Castle Black yeah. and 5,000 wildlings led by Jon's new best friend, Tormund Giants Pain. Yeah, yeah, and you decide to kill Jon Snow then. Yeah. Yes. Jon Snow is the only one who can yeah. control those wildlings. And I'm like, oh. let's kill them. We have this three meter high wall against yeah. the wildlings on the other side. This is going to be great. You're right. And Alistair Fawn, I mean, the, the reason he gives for letting Jon in is like, well, he orders our orders or something like that. Well, nobody ordered you to kill your Lord Commander. I think that's a standing order that you're not supposed to kill your Lord Commander. So yeah, you, obviously. So then he breaks the orders anyway. So th- this whole plot would have been much better if they just arrived on the south side of the wall. Yes, where the ship were in the first place before they took it to the north. Yes. So, yeah. In the harbor that's at the wall, mm-hmm. at the east side, on the south side. Of much, the wall. much, much more sense. Yes. But... And it, then they tease us with Benjamin Stark. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? What a teaser. But uh, that final scene there, when he's stabbed, that's uh, that's epic. And it's so... For the watch. For the watch, yeah. And Ollie is the last one to stab. He's like Brutus then, if Jon Snow is Julius Caesar. Very much so. Mm. And uh, another question on that is, what did the, uh, the brothers who were at Hardom, what do they think about this? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there must be some people who still love Jon Snow. And uh, the the fact that so many brothers of the Night Watch actually returned to the Wall should have made it clear that the White Walkers are back. Mm-hmm. A Hardom happened. Everybody in Castle Black should know about this at this point. Yeah. And they still murder Jon Snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of strange. And then, of course, the fact that Melisandre returns right before this happens. And mm-hmm. the Lord of Light has the power to bring back the dead. Yeah, now, well, yeah, now we're getting into this thing, so what do we think is going to happen? Yeah. And, and what happened? We have, I mean, there's so many speculations on, is Jon Snow dead? Is he alive? Will he be revived? Let's start first with, do we think he's dead or alive? I, I think it's, um, he's definitely, he is dead. Yeah. And he's free from his oath, mm-hmm. but he will be resurrected. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it, there is a very small possibility that he's just wounded and will be nursed back to health. But I don't think so because... Uh, no, he looked very dead. He looked very dead. And it also doesn't make sense from a plotline perspective. What makes sense is that he's dead. And then when, he, when he's dead, he's released from his... Yeah, like you said, he's released from his oaths. So he can do what he wants. Yes. And then somebody brings him back. And then, like you say, Melisandre... Somebody with red hair. <laughs> somebody with red hair. Yeah, Melisandre is the most obvious thing. The Night's King can also bring people back from the dead. Oh. I don't think that's... uh, No, I think we'll be brought back as a Lord of Light resurrected person and Mm -hmm. then miss something of his soul. Yeah. Just like Beric Dondarrion did. There's also people speculating that he will warg into uh, Ghost, his direwolf for a while. Yeah, that's uh, that's the other thing. But uh, no matter what, I think that Uh. Jon lives and that is... More likely than that Stannis is dead. <laughs> yeah. But, but the whole warging thing, I think it's neither here nor there. because uh, I think they should have planted the warging thing. But it's very telling that Ghost, who protected Sam and Jilly, mm-hmm. is nowhere to be seen. And he's obviously not locked up anymore because yeah. we know that he isn't locked up anymore. Yeah. And uh, any dog-like creature would have followed this monster out there. Mm-hmm. So where the hell is he? Yeah. It's, uh, and the only reason he wasn't in the scene uh, is the warging thing. So maybe that's not too far fetched. You mean that he, so, uh, that he wasn't present in the scene, so oh, that he could be because then they would have killed the dog, the the dog yeah, as well. Because then Ghost would have been killed. Yeah. So the warging thing, I think, is still on the table that mm-hmm. he could have warged. But yeah. I think a resurrection is much more likely. Yeah. But the resurrection could be. Uh, a red herring from 
typical George R. R. Martin thing as well. So uh, I'm not. Yeah. I, I believe in both. <laughs> well, I have information from the books, or no, I don't have information from books. I have information from George R. R. Martin. Okay. And I'm going to share this because the books are not the TV show. So there is. Should we give a spoiler warning here? Yeah, let's let's give a spoiler warning, but it's a small spoiler warning okay. because I don't I do not know what's going to happen in the TV show. Upcoming small spoiler warning. <laughs> Tiny spoiler. Well, the, the thing is that we we learned back in season one that Jon Snow does not know who his mother is. Yes. And has he learned by now? No. no. But the next time I meet you, I will tell you about your mother. <laughs> but but George, they have asked George R. R. Martin, will Jon Snow learn about his mother? Oh. And he said, yes, he will learn who his mother is. Oh, and that's hard to do if you're dead. Yes, so in the, in the books, because in the books he's in exa exactly the same place as he's in the TV show. Yes. He has been stabbed, and we have seen the knives go in, but we don't know if it, he's dead or mortally wounded. Or <laughs> Maybe he's not as obviously dead in the books. No, he's, yeah, that, that is true. He's, uh, he's not stabbed as many times. Uh, I, we should not go into the, the book plotline here, but I think mm. that the murder was set up a lot better in the books. I think so too. A, a lot better. <laughs> well, I think, I think just one lot. <laughs> okay, but uh, did any of the stupid questions remain? Uh, like why, no, the wildlings are not uh, no, entered? He didn't go to hard home in, no. in the books. But are the wildlings there? Or have they gone through the wall? Yeah, they have gone through the wall. Okay. So, it's, so they can still be pissed off. Yeah, but there's but they not, don't care about him as much. There's not as many wildlings and there's not as few black brothers. Okay, so it's not and, a hundred times more wildlings. Yeah, it's not the same pro, uh, yeah, same proportions. So it's there's a lot of different things there. So it makes more sense that way. It's not as senseless, so to say. But uh, so that's why, I mean, he... He could be uh, George R. R. Martin could have been misquoted or something when he said that yes, Jon Snow will learn about his mother. But uh, I believe that, so I believe that in the books we will learn it. Uh, but the TV show is not the same. No, plenty obviously of people, not. Plenty of people are dead in the TV show that are still alive in the books, and some the other way, I think also. So uh, we, so this is no guarantee that Jon Snow will learn about it. But we do. I mean, they have planted the seed already in season one that. That uh, he will learn about his mother, so it would be dis it would be disappointing. Yes. In the TV show, if first of all we want to learn, second of all it would be disappointing for us to not get to see him react to learning about his parentage. Yes. Uh, we have talked about his parentage many times before, so maybe mm -hmm. we don't need to go into that. But yeah. I think it's pretty clear by now who his parents are. Yes, but I think we will learn more about this next season. Yeah, and all, all the times they address this, and those two people in this season as well. So. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I have also seen some footage from next season. Ooh. But I'm not going to talk about that because that's spoiler. Okay, I'm going to talk about one thing that I've seen from next season that I thought was very hilarious. And it's not, it doesn't even count as a spoiler, I think. Okay. There was a picture of Arya. Mm -hmm. in uh, in water and then there was a text that Arya finally takes a bath <laughs> she has been in the same clothes like, and maybe she got new clothes in the house of black and white and maybe she washed herself there but we haven't seen it she yeah. still looks pretty <laughs> dirty <laughs> okay well I think this um, covers what happens what happened this season so what was your favorite scene for the season my favorite scene um uh, I think uh, it's kind of cheesy, I know, but I still felt the, the the scene that made me feel the most was the scene there where Daenerys was cornered at at the arena, and it's like, okay, now people are closing in from all the sides here. I'm gonna die, and I knew what was gonna happen. Yeah, I, I, I haven't read the books. I knew what was gonna happen, <laughs> <laughs> but I still felt like, oh, this is I, because I love these scenes where people are painted into a corner, and there's like, okay, there's no way out. Or seemingly no way out, and then they rescued anyway. Yeah, I was like, the dragon is going to come. The dragon is going. There is the dragon. <laughs> what was your favorite scene then? Uh, I think my. It's uh, if you if I think about what I felt the most when I watched it, mm. but it's in no sense my favorite scene. It's uh, the burning of Shireen. That was mm. the most touching scene. It was like, no, yeah. they can't do this. <laughs> and uh, then perhaps the the walk of shame. 
mm. was a very like oh wow they went there yeah uh, in uh, my favorite episode is by far the tenth uh, I think that was much better than Harlem mm. and uh, all the deaths and this was the season finale that really yeah. really was very good I I think that if I didn't know beforehand I think that uh, the stabbing of uh, Jon Snow would have been the, I mean I saw it uh, because I knew it was coming yeah but I mean, it's definitely the scene that has struck the most chord with every. I mean, yeah, it was shocking. Yeah, it was For shocking, sure. and you see everybody talk. The thing that everybody wants to talk to me about when I talk to people about uh, Game of Thrones is like, but Jon Snow, but Jon Snow. Very true, and the fact that Jon Snow's hair was the number one thing on Twitter <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was very interesting. It was like, oh, the season is over, but he still has his hair. When is he going to cut his hair? Did we talk about that? No, we didn't. I don't remember. Uh, of course, uh, Kit Harington uh, doesn't like having long hair. Mm. So it was written in his contract for the first season that he was not allowed to cut his hair. Yeah. And he still hasn't cut his hair. <laughs> so they expected if he was truly dead, mm-hmm. he would uh, cut his hair immediately. Or maybe he had this change your mind. Or... or maybe the contract said you can't cut your hair for two years <laughs> after. <laughs> Maybe you can't cut your hair until Game of Thrones is over. Oh, that that's nice. Until George R. R. Martin has finished all his books. Also, I think it was at Comic Con they usually let the dead uh, the actors with dead characters take the main stage for mm. the Game of Thrones things, and uh, Kit Harington wasn't even there. Yeah, well, I mean, he would have, I mean, he would have been asked the same questions over and over, and yes. th- those are the questions he can't answer. So yes, and he seems to have been in uh, North Island yeah. during filming. And yeah. So, yeah, John Or maybe he's visiting, let's see, we, let's not spoil too much. <laughs> maybe maybe he gets to play extras with, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with wigs on or something. Maybe it's going to be a flashback or something. Or it could be the most interesting plot twist ever. Yeah. Uh, another thing about Jon Snow, if we're going through it, that uh, President Obama mm-hmm. actually asked the producer, one of the producers. The director. The director, yeah. Yes, the director was visiting the White Which House. Which director? The With director who did episode 9 and 10. Oh, okay. He shook his hand. It's like you didn't just kill Jon Snow, now did you? <laughs> and uh, it's like I- I'm afraid I did so, Mr. President. <laughs> yeah. So Obama actually asked and was told that Jon Snow is dead. So the direct, yeah. So the director confirmed that Jon Snow is dead. So that's why it's very unlikely that he's not dead. I think. Remember the word of the Iron Islands: "Dead is dead," or "What is dead may never die." What that is dead may never die. So. Yeah, well, I don't know the, what I meant with that. <laughs> what is dead may never die. Yeah, the drowned god. So we are going to do some more uh, off-season episodes. And we'll talk about, to do a short one about my predictions. We'll, uh, how my predictions for season 5 turned out. And we'll end with doing season 6 predictions. And there are some other things we will do. Short episodes about this will probably be the longest one. Yeah. But we want to give you some content in this long, long wait for season six of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Still uh, six months to go. Mm -hmm. But that's it for today. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And see you soon. Bye.